I want to begin my sermon this morning by asking you to repeat some phrases after me, please, if you're comfortable doing so. I affirm my right, I affirm my right. to disagree with some sermons. I can disagree and still be part of this church. Brent can be wrong and still be my pastor. I want my pastor to speak out on sensitive issues, even when I may disagree with him. Thank you for the permission this morning that you give me. Sex today is a difficult topic for many churches and for our society in general. It is uncomfortable for us to talk about sex and in particular for us to talk about it in church. I'm sure that even with the advance notice that we were going to cover this topic today, some of you weren't aware of it. You may have brought family or friends, and you're thinking to my, yourself, oh my God. <laughs> However, sex is an important topic, and it's an appropriate topic for us to address, especially since it was one of the top questions that you raised when we asked you to suggest questions for this sermon series. So, if you don't like the fact that we're addressing it, blame it on the person sitting beside you this morning. I also celebrate that this church, we can agree to disagree on some issues and still be in community together. Is sex bad was one of the main questions that you asked. And the response, once again, is it depends. Sex itself is a gift from God. That may come as shocking to many of you who are raised in religious traditions that taught differently, either by what they said or its silence. Sex itself is a gift from God. Your sexuality is God's gift to you. How you use your sexuality can be your gift that you give to yourself or another or a gift you give back to God. For me, there is lots of biblical support for this view that sex is a gift. The challenge is how our society treats sex and how the church has historically treated sex. Society and the church have taken something that's a gift from God, sex, and have treated it like it's bad and it's dirty and, according to some, it's only necessary for procreation. So guess what happens when you take something that's good and you treat it as evil? Then dysfunctional behavior and inappropriate actions tend to reign. We need to treat sex as a gift. We need to talk about sex in the open and in non-judgmental ways. We need to stop the guilt and the shame around this topic. A few years ago, I preached a sermon on sex and said that it, at that point it, was, uh, it took 26 years for you to pre push me to preach on the topic. And afterwards, in the social hall, a young heterosexual woman came to me and she said, Pastor, I've been coming to this church for a year waiting for that sermon. My husband and I were married, and whenever we have sex, we both feel guilty because of our religious upbringing. And I came here to hear good news. We also need to stop talking about sex as it is dirty. Sexual jokes are called dirty jokes. Think about it. Recently in the media, the lives of Tiger Woods and Adam Giambroni have been brought into full public view. And frankly, I have been very uncomfortable with the public discourse around both of these individuals. While they may owe their partner an explanation or an apology, I don't think either of one of them owe me or the public an apology. It seems that the way we play gotcha too, too much for our public figures has gotten out of control. 
We seem to treat mistakes made in the realm of sex as a much greater mistake, and we punish folks to a much greater degree. I'm much more concerned with how athletes model nonviolence than I am concerned about who they sleep with. And I'm much more concerned about how a politician advances human rights and works on eliminating poverty than I am about who they sleep with. In order for sex... In order for sex to be seen as a gift, we need age-appropriate sex education in our homes, in our schools, and in our churches. And frankly, we have fallen down on that here at MCC Toronto. We need to talk about what is sexual health, what is sexual healing, and yet we're embarrassed to even use the correct words to describe parts of the human body and to describe certain sexual practices. What does our spirituality say to our sexuality? What does our sexuality say to our spirituality? Now, yes, there are certain things that are clearly, in my opinion, inappropriate sexual behavior. However, there is also way too much judgmental behavior going on. Think about it. When there are certain sexual behaviors that aren't personally your preferences, then we tend to label them either funny or kinky, both of which are judgmental labels and inappropriate for people of faith. We may not be into them. That's okay. We may not even understand them. That's okay. But we do not have the right to judge others. I told you about a few years ago when John and I went on a trip to Paris as a gift from some of you. And Robert, my assistant, booked us into a hotel that some famous artist had stayed in, thinking that this would be uh, really interesting for John, and it was. However, it happened to be right beside the International Erotic Museum. <laughs> so every day as I walked by and looked in the window, I was interesting, interested. And finally, I just had to go in. And it took hours for John to explain to me what all those items were for. <laughs> this in itself was interesting and caused conversations. How, John, did you know about these things? <laughs> and as you may have experienced in his sweet, seemingly innocent way, he just smiled. Many items that I saw there, I thought, really? Some, I said... Ouch. <laughs> and some I suggested that John might want to add them to my wish list for Christmas and birthdays. <laughs> the embarrassment and the silence around sexual issues is damaging to our society, it's damaging to our youth, and it's damaging to a healthy development of sexual healing and the spirituality-sexuality conversation. In order to talk about healthy boundaries regarding sex, we need to talk about sex. In order to talk about sexual healing, we need to talk about sex. In order to talk about appropriate sexual boundaries or dysfunctions, we need to talk about sex. And yet the number of couples, for instance, gay or straight, who are having problems in their relationships because of sexual issues, that's a very high percentage of couples who've been in long-term relationships. And yet, they're too embarrassed to reach out for help. Kids who've been sexually abused often don't have the language to speak up and don't feel it's safe to do so. We, we are a very sexually repressed society. And statistics show us that the more repressed a society is, the higher rate of teen pregnancies and the higher rate of sexual dysfunctions. For instance, it has been shown that a higher percentage of gays and lesbians have been abused as children. And yet the silence around this has allowed the misinformation that abuse somehow makes us gay or lesbian instead of the more recent research that shows that somehow the offender recognizes a vulnerability in gay and lesbian youth, and therefore we become a bigger target. 
and we sometimes think it's our own fault and so we don't speak up. 